Hello and greetings to everyone. Once again, welcome to Class Kirby, our series of online classes, Season 2, where we are talking about pharmacology in the nursing practice. My name is Jonas and I will be your lecturer and this is episode number 5, Routes of Drug Administration. <music> Allow me to provide you the objectives for today's discussion. Number one, I would like everyone to understand the major routes of medication administration. Number two, we would like to identify the advantages and the disadvantages of different routes of drug administration. Number three, we would like to distinguish which drugs should be given on this particular route, namely the enteral and the parenteral route. And number four, we would like to integrate knowledge in the administration of medication. For this discussion, we are to focus on two major routes of drug administration, namely the enteral route and number two, the parenteral route. Allow me to define what the first one is. So, enteral administration is also known as oral administration. I would like to present to you the different advantages, disadvantages, as well as contraindication of which. The enteral administration or the enteral route is the most desirable way for us to give drugs, primarily because drugs are being provided through the mouth. The oral route is the most practical, economical, convenient, and safe way to administer drug. That is why the, it is most commonly used. Based from the previous definition that I have just mentioned, we can identify several advantages with using uh, the enteral route as our drug administration route. Number one will be it's easy and convenient. Primarily because you and I have this opening present to us, which is our oral opening, which is the mode or port of entry for our uh, food and drugs for that matter. It's natural for us to take in food, water, as well as drugs in our, through our mouth. That's why it's said to be easy and convenient. Unlike when you are to insert medication parenterally, which will require breakage of the skin, which is not normally happening within the body, your oral route, your oral area, your mouth is naturally present sa bawat isa. That's why it's said to be easy and convenient. That's why as much as possible in the hospital, we would like to utilize this route kung maaari, if possible. Number two, Medications that are given enterally are generally cheaper in nature. I remember the first time that they have given me a paracetamol shot because I was, well, severely febrile. Or I'm experiencing hyperpyrexia due to dengue. The medication was paracetamol 500 milligrams. If you have observed your typical biogesic or paracetamol that can be bought over the counter, which is also paracetamol 500 milligrams, the cost is significantly different. If I'm not mistaken, I paid 250 pesos to 350 pesos for just one shot of paracetamol 500 milligrams intravenous. While if you just simply uh, bought paracetamol over the counter, that will cost you roughly 10 pesos. So the significant difference between the price also matters because you remember that we are treating the patient holistically and that includes the economic side, the financial side of our patient. That's why we should consider it as well. Number three, it's relatively safe. Well, wag naman sana, but worse comes to worse when an opportunity or rather a scenario occurs where you have administered a wrong medication to a wrong patient okay, or a wrong medication to a particular patient, mas mabilis i-counteract yung effect kapag ka-oral ang binigay. If you remember our study about pharmaceutic, pharmacokinetic phase, usually it takes longer time in order for oral medications to uh, take its effect compared to those medications that are injected in our body. That's why we can uh, 
do something ahead of time kasi mahaba pa ang grace period that's why it's said to be relatively safe another because uh, in relation to point number one we are not utilizing any other opening that is not normally present in our body unlike for parenteral medication which again will require breakage of the skin baka magcause pa yun ng infection unlike for oral area seldom can we experience if not impossible that we experience infection related to drug administration through the oral route unless talagang contaminated yung ininom mong uh, uh, fluid together with your medication but if not I don't uh, expect or I haven't heard of a case that infection occurred due to uh, this mode of drug administration. And lastly, it's said to be controlled. Despite the presented advantages for using the enteral route as our route of choice, there are also several disadvantages that will somehow make this unfavorable for the patient. Number one, taking oral medications might result to vomiting possibly due to the taste of the medication and even irritation of the gastric mucosa one of the classic example of which is a pro is prolonged intake of aspirin we all know that aspirin is a gastric irritant by nature despite you well taking it with food there might be time that due to prolonged or chronic use of that particular medication, repetitive uh, irritation of the gastric lining that might cause to ulceration of your gastric area. That's one of the identified disadvantages. Number two, you know that before the medication can uh, be absorbed or undergo the pharmacokinetic phase, naga undergo mo na siya ng pharmaceutic phase. And medications that are that are undergoing pharmaceutic phase at times might suffer or might undergo untimely destruction of the said medication, primarily due to the presence of several digestive enzymes present in your mouth up until your gut that might destroy the active ingredient ng gamot. Yun ang isa sa mga disadvantages natin. Kaya nga in relation, point number three, we cannot accurately measure the rate of absorption or the amount of medication that is being absorbed. Teka lang sir, I'm familiar with that. The amount of medication that is being absorbed? Yes, I'm talking about bioavailability. Because we cannot really quantify the amount of the medication that will enter through the circulation of your patient primarily because a portion of which has been destroyed due to the presence of pharmaceutic phase which is disintegration and dissolution kaya hindi natin ma-quantify exactly ilang ba gano ba karaming gamot ang pumapasok sa circulatory system ng patient in order for it to circulate all throughout the body that's why we can inaccurately measure its absorption. And number four, you cannot administer oral medication for patients that are uncooperative, primarily because they might simply spit it out, or kaya kung unconscious, which will be presented later on. You cannot administer these kinds of medication, primarily because of the presence of risk for aspiration. In line with the presented disadvantages, meron namang mga contraindication. Mind you, pag sinabing contraindication, hindi natin pwedeng ibigay ang medication through oral or enteral route to the following patients. Number one, to patients who are suffering from dysphagia. Ibig sabihin, there is difficulty in swallowing because of lack of control sa ating swallowing reflex the patient might suffer aspiration. Number two, for patients that are too small, for example, infants and small children who cannot swallow pills, tablets, and capsules. Well, for this matter, sa mga pediatric clients natin, after our medication or drug of choice kapag ka mga bata are usually syrup or fluids, liquids for that matter. However, if the patient is... Uh, well, infant, that at times their reflexes are even underdeveloped, you should take extra precautionary measures because it might lead again to aspiration. And I remember the time when I first drank my uh, biogesic tablet nung bata pa lang ako. I cannot swallow it. 
Yes, it's small in nature, but the psychological effect that you are swallowing a medication purposefully, it's difficult for children. That's why I have asked my mother to crush, uh, to crush that particular medication. However, it produced a bitter taste, uh, leading to a feeling of being nauseated and on the verge of vomiting. So that is a contraindication. Ibig sabihin, extra consideration for pediatric clients. Consider the type of medication that is to be given orally. Number three is for patients who are uncooperative. Sir, sino po ba ang mga patient na uncooperative? Number one, for patients that are irrational and restless, nagwawala, okay? They are simply all over the place with some... Uh, 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 violent tendencies those instances i would like to remind you that it is your responsibility to protect yourself as well and if the patient is combative by nature talagang may problema psychologically that makes them combative then by all means it might be a problem for you to administer medication uh, at, through the enteral route because as i have said it requires cooperation from your patient sino pa ang hindi talaga pwedeng bigyan ng ng oral medication. Yung mga pasyente na unconscious. Sino yung mga yun? Yun yung mga patient that are completely sedated for operation, that have just been uh, uh, pulled out of the OR. So, syempre, may effect pa yung sedatives and uh, different medications that were given to them. Also, the, those patients that are considered to be on a vegetative state, ibig sabihin, they have a glass glaucoma scale of less than 8 comatose. Okay? Yun yung mga patient na hindi natin pwedeng bigyan ng medication through the oral area. Uh, mamaya, magpe-present ako sa inyo ng iba pang mode of enteral administration. Pero itong mga to, hindi pwedeng magbigay ng medication orally. Primarily because their gag reflex, their swallowing reflex is not intact, is not present. And that might lead again to aspiration. So as you all know, palaging yun ang contraindication. It all boils down to the risk for aspiration na sasanipan in Tagalog. Next will be for patients that are advised to be on an NPO status or what you call nothing per orem. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila pwedeng magpasok ng kahit ano sa kanilang bibig. Nothing per orem. Uh, it will uh, include food, water, beverages, as well as medications on certain circumstances. So for example, a patient, uh, reviewing the patient's chart, you have noticed that the doctor ordered the patient to be an, uh, under an NPO status. However, you have double-checked the medication order and the doctor also ordered a medication to be taken orally. Question, agad mo bang hindi ibibigay dahil NPO status? The answer is no. You would like to confirm the order to the doctor. Doctor, is your NPO order including medication? Or can we ask the patient to take the medication with minute sips of water? Doon mo malalaman kung pwede mong mabigay ang medication. Because there are some cases that NPO status is simply for fasting. For example, I myself will have a laboratory examination due tomorrow. And that will require me to well uh, be on an NPO status for 8 hours. Wala ako dapat kinakain. Pero that doesn't mean that I am not allowed to take in water because it will not affect the result of my laboratory uh, examinations. That's why, can I take the medication? Then by all means, uh, if the doctor said so, then you can allow the patient to take the medication. However, for patients such as those that are to undergo surgery, we're in strict aspiration precaution is being... Uh, uh, practice, talagang kahit tubig, kahit medication is not being provided to the patient. That's why, always confirm the doctor's order to the doctor him or herself in order to verify if indeed medication can be allowed. Next among our contraindication will be those patients that are to undergo anesthesia. Okay, in relation to patients that are on NPO, Patients that are usually to undergo surgery and to have anesthesia are usually subjected to an NPO status. Kaya talagang hindi sila pwedeng pakainin, painumin ng gamot. 
Okay? Especially because it will uh, uh, increase the risk for aspiration. Because when you anesthetize a patient, you are artificially putting them on a state of coma. Ibig sabihin, mawawala po ba yung gag reflex nila and other reflexes of the body? Yes, that's why you need to be careful for these kinds of uh, instructions for your patient. I remember one time, uh, I am the receiving nurse. If, if, if you know, I'm an OR nurse before I went to the academe. That's why I had this experience that a particular patient is to be uh, uh, subjected to a surgery. So upon endorsing by the nurse, uh, the patient to me, because I'm the receiving OR nurse, I have double-checked if the patient indeed haven't taken anything through uh, his mouth. Kasi lalaki yung pasyente. The answer of the patient is that he haven't taken any food at all. However, he just drank water before going to the OR. That jeopardized the whole thought of being on an NPO status prior to anesthesia, induction, or prior to surgery. Kaya anong nangyari? Napospone yung surgery for another day. So you see, you need to double-check doctor's order prior to carrying it out and reinforce the patient's knowledge. Kasi minsan, hindi nila alam kung anong hindi pwedeng inumin sa pwedeng inumin. Next will be for those patients that are experiencing nausea and vomiting. Well, diarrhea is another case that's for severe diarrhea. However, let's focus on nausea and vomiting. If the patient uh, took a medication or drank the medication, then within 30 minutes, nag-vomit siya by all means, re-give the medication. However, if the medication has already been there for at least 30 minutes or more, by all means, okay na yun. Good as given. Good as absorbed. That's why hindi na natin sila binibigay pa. And lastly, for patients who have undergone uh, oral surgeries and those patients that have different diseases of the oral cavity. Classic example, patients that have just undergone uh, cleft palate repair or palate repair because there is simply a connection between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity which is supposed to be not present due to the presence of your uh, uh, upper oral cavity na nagsaserve as blockage doon sa dalawang cavity na yon. Uh, hindi tayo pwede magbigay ng oral medication primarily because again, there is a risk for aspiration. So those are your contraindications for oral or enteral medication. Now we move to the special consideration when utilizing enteral route or oral route uh, for our drug administration route of choice. Okay, number one. Pag yung pasyente mo, pediatric client, don't give or avoid mixing medications or drugs to food when the patient is an infant or a child. I remember back then, in order to have this particular particular uh, syrup uh, to be given to me, nilalagay sa hot dogs or fried chicken. Tendency for the child, he or she will associate that unpleasant taste doon sa pagkain na yon. Tendency is, hindi niya nakakainin ever again. That's why we would like to uh, avoid mixing medication to uh, food when the patient is an infant or a child. Number two, anong pwede natin gawin? If the patient, uh, being a pediatric client, yung medyo nakakaintin din na, or they are able to comprehend what whatever instruction we are providing, explain to the child that patient, uh, patient or Jonas, baby Jonas, uh, the medication that I am to provide you will have an objectionable taste. Mapait to, pero bibigyan kita agad ng tubig. This will enable you to establish trust between you and your pediatric client. You are just simply to say what he or she is to expect while drinking that particular medication. Sir, paano naman po pag sobrang bata, infants, or small children talaga, 
Okay? You can use dropper to give infants very, or, or very small children liquid medication. And mind you, saan po nilalagay ang dropper or saan pinapatak ang dropper? You can uh, uh, put the medication on the patient's cheeks so that it will flow uh, through the posterior portion of the oral cavity para hindi biglang uh, nag-iilisit ng gag reflex basta-basta because uncontrolled uh, gag reflex might result to aspiration. Kasi nagbibigay ka ng continuous amount of medication. Okay? So, if you are to use a dropper, don't uh, let it have contact on the posterior portion of your tongue because that will, again, elicit uh, gag reflex. Next, do not tilt the head backwards. The primary reason is that you are increasing risk for aspiration when doing so. So, hindi po totoo yung kapag ka uminom ng gamot, gaganyan ka. For adults, it can be true because we have voluntary control of our gag reflex. However, if the patient is infant, tilting the head backwards might result to aspiration. Kaya wag na natin siyang gagawin. Sir, kung hindi pwedeng i-mix sa pagkain, how can we somehow alleviate that uh, objectionable taste for different medications? Well, you can give uh, generous amounts of water and other liquids such as juices if permitted. Kung wala namang magiging uh, juice or uh, liquid to medication interaction na makakasira ng medication, then by all means, you can give juices. Uh, even at times milk, depende, as long as it's uh, permissible based from the drug manufacturer. Ano pa? You can provide a small piece of ice for the patient to suck. This will provide a numbing sensation as well as dilute the concentrated taste of that unpleasurable experience na mararamdaman nila. Or you can simply do a cocktail, put some ice and drop some of the medication there in order for it to be diluted and offer it to the patient with the drinking straw. Diba, social? Parang cocktail na cocktail lang ang dating. Next, as I have reminded everyone, place the medication in a dropper or syringe and place the syringe well back on the tongue while, the pa while being careful not to touch the tongue. Okay? Because it will elicit uncontrolled gag reflex. If the medication has really an unpleasant, objectionable taste that will linger in the patient's mouth and sooner or later might result to nose being nauseated and vomiting that particular medication, you can offer oral hygiene. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo siyang papag-brush or papag-oral uh, gargle in order to flush out that objectionable taste doon sa loob ng kanyang bibig. Okay, paano nga ba natin ibibigay ang oral or enteral medications to our patient? Number one, ito, general for all. Before providing medications to our patient, you should observe the 10R for medication administration. Dapat ma-present natin sa kanila yung kanilang routes. Check the medication if it's correct. Then, it should include the drug name, the dosage, as well as the route of administration together with the frequency and the duration of the whole therapy. You should also confirm if you are providing the medication to the right patient. And as well as that the patient have consented to the intake of that particular medication. Check if there are any special circumstances surrounding administration of the dosage to the patient, example of which is if the patient is on an NPO status or if the patient is having a nasogastric tube. Okay? Pag may nasogastric tube, definitely you are not to give oral medication. Pero enteral. Paano po yun, sir? Kasi may tube that is exiting through your nose or your nasal area. However, is directly inserted up until your gastric area. So, considered pa rin ba siyang enteral? Considered pa rin. Pero may mga special consideration. Mamaya natin siya pag-uusapan. Okay? Check with the prescriber to determine if the medication should be administered in other route if the oral route is not prescribed. Number three. 
Be certain that you know the expected action, safe dosage ranges, special instruction for administration, and adverse effects uh, associated with the drug orders. This is simply being prepared prior to medication administration. Prior to administering the medication, you should also have the necessary equipment such as your trays, your medication card, you should have your water, and uh, uh, as well as your mortar and pestle if it will require you to crush the medication. Then, prior to opening uh, the tablet or the capsule from its package, always perform hand hygiene. Prepare the dosage as ordered. Remember not to crush or tamper medications that are considered to be enteric coated or sustained action drug forms. Scored tablet may be broken and crushed depending on the marks. The dosage forms other than those available in the nursing unit are required for the patient. Uh, that is required for the patient, ibig sabihin wala sa unit, then contact the pharmacist. They will be the one to determine what other forms or available drug uh, forms are to be considered of equal na pwede natin i-consider na i-suggest sa doctor in order for the doctor to qualify if they, we can change the order of that particular medication. Check the label on the medication again tatlong beses pagkakuha sa drawer bago i-prepare at bago ipainom or ibigay sa pasyente. Do not touch the labels or capsules with your hands. Ibig sabihin, tama po ba yung you pop the package open, then get the tablet, hindi tama yon. Ask the patient to have his or her hand waiting for the medication and pop it open sa kamay mismo ng pasyente. If ayaw niya naman na ganun, you can offer a medication cup. Then, from uh, you are to pop the medication doon sa medication cup. Huwag nating hahawakan yung medication primarily because it might contaminate the medication. At least yung pasyente, sarili niya kamay yung ginamit niya. Okay? Because the patient might refuse if the patient have seen you touching his or her drug or medication. Never prepare a dosage of medication which is discolored or is precipitated. Yung kulay ng medication mo supposed to be white orange na. Huwag mo nang ibigay. Kahit nakalagay pa dun sa expiration date, hindi pa siya expired. Ibig sabihin, uh, there was a chemical reaction between the medication and its environment despite it being sealed. Huwag mo nang ibigay because it might provide you uh, a different result. Then, if the patient expresses doubt with the medication, always recheck the order, drug label, as well as the dosage of the container. Before providing the medication, ang preferred nating position ng patient, naka-elevate siya, naka-fowlers, naka-elevate ang head of bed. This will reduce the risk for aspiration or seating kung pwede. We are not to provide oral medication while the patient is lying down or in a supine position kasi it might result to aspiration. Stay with the patient up until the time that the patient have swallowed the medication. It's our job to confirm if indeed the medication has been swallowed. Okay? Kasi there are patients, especially those that have psychiatric problems, tendency is for them to simply spit the medication out or even hide the medication under their uh, tongue. That's why it's our responsibility to confirm na inumba ng pasyente natin ang gamot. If the patient refuses the medication, you are to determine why, then uh, provide explanation to the patient and reinforce the knowledge. Well, kung wala talagang, ayaw niya talagang i-take yung medication, then report the refusal and come up with the form that will uh, support your claim that the patient indeed refused to take that particular medication. Ito yung sabi ko kanina, if the patient vomits, uh, within 20 to 30 minutes after taking the medication, the physician must uh, promptly notify also the details of the patient's uh, chart. Save the vomitus for further observation para makita mo kung nandoon pa uh, ang mga gamot and if, uh, uh, if that is still possible. Well, if the dosage is to be administered sublingually, you are simply to instruct the patient to put the medication under the tongue and not for it to be swallowed kasi natatandaan nyo may high, high first pass effect or high metabolic uh, or high ang chance na man metabolize agad yung gamot 
That's why hindi natin pwedeng iswallow. Kaya anong gagawin pag sublingual? Diyan lang po sa ilalim ng dila. Or kapag ka bucal ang type ng medication, sa may pisngi lang, not to be swallowed as well. The patient should also be advised not to chew the tablet or drink while the tablet is being absorbed. If the fluid intake and output is being monitored for our patients, especially for patients that are diagnosed with chronic kidney disease or other kidney uh, diseases for that matter, record the amount of fluid taken together with the drug. Okay? And lastly, uh, following the administration, be certain that the patient is comfortable, then immediately record the procedure. This should include the name of the drug, the dosage, special factors or considerations related to the administration. Examples, yun nga, uh, nasogastric tube, uh, clinamp mo ulit, or whatever that may be. You have flushed the nasogastric tube, also indicate the time of administration and the name uh, of the one that have administered you, the person who have administered the medication for uh, charting and documenting purposes. Sir, kanina pa namin naririnig yung nasogastric tube. Yes, nasogastric tube is another form of oral medi uh, of enteral medication administration wherein there is an artificial tube inserted through the nasal area extending up till the stomach or gastric area. Kaya tawag sa kanya, nasogastric tube. Ano ang mga special consideration natin pag nasogastric tube? Siyempre tube dyan. There is a tendency for different medication or different... Um, food or, or liquid to be stuck there. That's why as much as possible, we would like to liquefy the medication. Eh sir, kapaano kapag ka medication mo, tablet? Simply crush the medication finely and mix it with copious amount of water. Okay? Para mag-liquefy yung gamot. Pagkatapos, you are to, to give the medication there. Soft gelatin capsule, kapag ka liquid ang capsule, simply puncture the liquid then, aspirate the medication or puncture the liquid and let the liquid flow sa iyong container. Mix with copious amount of water, then administer. Okay? Uh, usually, when a powder form or, or the capsule is uh, solid or in, in form or powdered yung nasa loob, you are usually to dilute it on using 20 to 30 ml of water or normal saline, depende. Uh, pwede naman kahit ano to be taken while the patient is patient's head is elevated approximately 30 to 45 degrees ibig sabihin semi fowlers up until actually minsan up until sitting depending on the hospital's institution uh, or the institution's policy this is primarily to avoid aspiration ano ang mga importanteng dapat nyong malaman when we are utilizing a nasogastric tube we need to check for patency and placement. Paano natin i-check yon? Okay. Para maging maliwanag, the golden standard or the best way for us to be confident that the nasogastric tube is indeed on your stomach is for you to have imaging procedures. Paano? X-ray. Okay. Again, X-ray is the golden standard for checking the placement and the patency of your nasogast nasogastric tube. However, is it always applicable? No, because usually x-ray is done once. Paano mo it check for the succeeding days? Okay? Simply as, uh, uh, do the following procedures. Number one, auscultate for borborygmi. What is borborygmi? Connect an acepto syringe or a bulb syringe on the tip of your nasogastric tube. Then, pump in air. Okay? Once you have pumped air, what is the expected uh, effect? You should hear a gargling sound on the left upper quadrant of your stomach where your, uh, or of your abdomen, where your stomach lies. Ang tawag doon, burburig me. Kung merong gargling sound, kunyari, nag-inject ka ng air, tapos nag-gargle, brr, brr, brr. Alright? That means that the nasogastric tube is intact on your gastric area. Eh sir, ano po yung abnormal? Nag-pump ka ng air, wala kang narinig na berberigmi. Why? Because based from your understanding in your basic anatomy and physiology, parehong track ang dinadaluyan ng respiratory as well as gastrointestinal. 
Baka nasa respiratory ngayon ang track mo. And mind you, pag hindi ka nag-check, nagbigay ka ng uh, liquid medication, pumunta sa respiratory system, that is direct uh, aspiration. That might even lead to the death of your patient. That's why always check the patency. Kapag ka nagbomba ka, walang berberigmi, check auscultate sa chest. Pag nagbomba, tapos narinig mo yung chest nag-expand, then by all means, your nasogastric tube is dislodged. Okay? That's why, replace it. Okay? Iposition mo ulit. Reposition your nasogastric tube again. Paano pa, sir, ang pwede natin pang-determine ng uh, placement if there is a gastric aspirate? Ano pong ibig sabihin? Nag-aspirate ka sa bowel syringe mo, naglagay ka negative pressure, nilagay mo dun sa dulo, nirelease mo, that will create a vacuum. And that vacuum will produce aspirate. If the pH level of your aspirate is approximately 2 uh, or more or less a pH of 2, then by all means, that is the gastric region. Kasi kapag ka hindi siya acidic ang pH, baka nasa respiratory ka na naman. And that is a big problem. Other special considerations when using a nasogastric tube for drug administration is that after uh, providing the medication to our patients, which is usually diluted using 20 to uh, 30 ml of water for children and 30 to 35 ml approximately for adults, and the tube has been clamped for uh, another 20 to 30 minutes. Okay? Ano pong ibig sabihin? You should do sandwiching technique. How is that? Gawin nyo munang patent yung tube. So prior to administering the medication, flush the tube. Okay? By providing several amounts of water. Record. Usually 20 to 30. Then after that, provide the medication. Now there might be some particles of the medication that is stuck on the surface or on the lining of your tube. Para matanggal yon and to maintain the patency, flush it again. For children, approximately 20 to 30 ml of, of fluid. For normal adults, 30 to 35 ml. And it is necessary for us to clamp. Otherwise, the medication which, ha which has just been administered will be withdrawn uh, from the stomach by suction apparatus. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Pag ang patient mo for suctioning ang gastric area, hold the suctioning for another 20, uh, at least 30 minutes, okay? In order to facilitate absorption ng medication mo, okay? And also, clamp that particular tube. There are some tubes that can be, uh, or that has a manual clamp, and there are tubes that are usually being folded into two in order for it to be clamped, Okay? Also, after administration of the medication, if not contraindicated, kindly put your patient on, the, uh, on a semi-fowler to high-fowler position for an additional 20 to 30 minutes following the installation of medication. This will provide uh, or this will lessen the risk for aspiration from our, for our patient. Now we are to discuss medications that are given through the parenteral route. Kung ang enteral route, ang keyword natin will be the gastrointestinal area. Kapag ka parenteral route, there is a breakage of the skin. Mamaya, makikita natin sila isa-isa. Allow me to present to you the advantages, disadvantages, as well as the contraindications. However, let me read this to you. Your parenteral route simply refers to medications but uh, or current usage of medication that has restricted them to mean injections. So usually, parenteral route is den or denotes a medication being injected to our patients. Parenteral route ordinarily refers to all the various ways by which solutions or suspensions of drugs are being injected beneath the skin and uh, deposited all throughout the body. So, pag pinag-usapan natin ang parenteral route, ang unang pumapasok sa isipan natin will be the word injection. There are several advantages for using parenteral as our route of choice. Number one, compared to medications taken orally, parenteral medications uh, rate of absorption is generally faster. 
Why? Halos malapit na sila if not diretso sa circulatory system. Kaya mabilis silang maabsorb within our circulation. Plus, it's already liquid in nature so wala nang disintegration and dissolution phase. Number two, usually this will be the route of choice for medications that are considered to be emergency medications. Kasi mabilis nga ang absorption, mabilis ang therapeutic effect. If you remember our pharmaco or our dosage response curve, madalas ang uh, parenteral medication agad nagpipik or konte ang ons ang time that it takes to reach the minimum effective concentration or what you call the uh, onset of action. Number three, the desired dose can be measured. Why? Especially for medications that are administered through the venous or intravenously, okay, the bioavailability is usually 100%. Kung gaano karami yung menix mo medication, kung gaano karami yung in-inject mo, ganun karami ang percent na medication sa ating uh, blood or sa ating circulation. And lastly, it's uh, usually prescribed or uh, preferred for patients with special uh, needs. For patients that are unconscious, yung mga pinag-usapan natin kanina, unconscious, uh, combative, uncontrolled, restless, these are the types of, or this is the route of medication administration, which is our, which should be our choice. However, there are several disadvantages in using parenteral as our route of choice. Number one, since there will be a breakage in our skin, and you all know based from your basic concept of anatomy and physiology that our skin is the primary barrier, part of our innate immune system na combat for infection, you should perform, okay, dapat gawin ang parenteral administration of medication in strict asepsis. Pag pinag-usapan natin ang asepsis, disinfected dapat ang area. Hindi lang malinis, disinfected. Okay, number two, you cannot provide autonomous right away. Okay, because this will require several instructions. Ang alam ko lang na nabibigay na autonomously will be subcutaneous. Especially if the patient is used to taking subcutaneous injections, particularly for patients that are diabetic. However, if you are to do an intravenous shot by yourself, baka mahirapan ka. That's why it does not promote autonomy to the patient. Why? Because there should be a licensed medica uh, uh, medical professional who will uh, administer the medication. Uh, for, uh, for us nurses, we have this league that allows uh, nurses to administer medication via intravenous route. Okay? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's called ANSAP. You will know more about these kinds of organization present in the Philippines comes the time that you are to study uh, jurisprudence. Next, one of the major disadvantages is that it causes impairment of our skin integrity. Yung continuity talaga ng skin, ibe-break, kaya masakit, masakit. This is uncomfortable uh, to our patient. This will provide physical discomfort. That's why a lot, if you remember back when you were a child, because this is the same for me, the moment that I step in the doctor's office, then I see the doctor handling this syringe, I'm immediately... Uh, frightened, terrified, ang tendency is for me to cry. Primarily because I have associated parenteral route to pain. Which is, well, true. Because there will be breakage of the skin continuity and that will involve damage to the nerve endings. Kaya talagang may pain na produce. However, always maintain asepsis technique para yung pain dun lang sa puncture. And you will not uh, be part of another infectious cycle kasi hindi mo nilinis kaya dapat palaging sterile ang area disinfected another is that generally speaking medications given through parenteral route are expensive uh, kanina example natin paracetamol magbigay pa ako ng isang pang example if you know omeprazole omeprazole is usually taken by patients who are experiencing GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disorder wherein uh, because of their weak cardiac sphincter usually the contents of your stomach is regurgitated uh, 
uh, that's why you are feeling the pain sa may chest area or heartburn as you know it. Nagtatig silang omeprazole. Usually, omeprazole 40 milligrams is approximately 40 pesos if I'm not mistaken. However, if you are to take omeprazole via IV, that will cost you minimum 1.5 if I'm not mistaken. It might even reach up to 2,500. So you now see the significant difference in terms of pricing. Next, this cannot be administered for patients that are for discharge or that are simply outpatient because others might require uh, the in, uh, uh, administration of an intravenous fluid for it will, should be incorporated and the like. Hindi mo naman pwedeng ipauwi basta sa pasyente mo na siya ay nakaswero because intravenous fluid will require additional uh, instructions which at times will be difficult for the patient to carry out because they do not have the technical know-how on how to perform it. Kaya, always consider if the patient is inpatient or outpatient prior to uh, suggesting that the route of choice should be parenteral route. Kasi kailangan usually for this kinds of administration, especially for intravenous, uh, talaga nagre-require ng admission. And lastly, it's difficult to troubleshoot. Primarily because agad na-absorb, agad nagte-take effect. Kaya pag mali ang nabigay mong gamot, agad din magte-take effect. That's why it's difficult to troubleshoot. Kaya pag nagkaroon ng error, immediately report it to your attending physician in order for us to troubleshoot it immediately. What is the contraindication? The area of choice will be that er those areas that are typically hairless at walang extra keratinization, hindi makapal, walang calyx. Okay, that's why it's contraindicated if the area of choice is inflamed, that's number one. And number two, if there's a presence of scar. Pag nasa may scar ka tutusok, huwag mo nang itusok doon, hanap ka ng ibang area. Because it's not prescribed to inject on that area because that is already uh, fibrotic tissue. Okay, makapal kesa sa normal. There are several types of medication administration or parenteral injections for that matter. Pag-usapan natin sila isa-isa. Number one will be intradermal injection. Intra, into, papaso. Dermal is the area kung saan dinadala yung gamot. That's why intradermal injection is simply injecting medication into the dermal layer, which is the layer just beneath your epidermis o yung pinakalabas. Usually, the amount of medication ranges from 0 0.01 or 1 hundredths to 0.1 or 1 tenths. Mind you, don't be misled by this unit of measures. Primarily because, tignan nyo dun sa image natin, merong tuberculin syringe dyan. Ang tuberculin syringe, per definition, is graduated as per tenth of an ml. Ibig sabihin, tenth, 1 tenth of an ml. However, sabi ang gamot natin, maximum of 1 tenth. For your intradermal injections, the sites that are usually preferred are the following. Ano muna yung criteria? It should be lightly pigmented, thinly keratinized, and hairless. Saan yung mga yun? You have the ventral portion of your middle forearm dito. You also have your clavicular area as well as your scapular area at the back. So, depending kung ano ang most accessible. However, the most common area for intradermal injection is through uh, the ventral portion of your mid-forearm. Okay? What are the instruments that you need to prepare? The equipments that you need to prepare is, of course, a needle that is usually gauge 25 to 27. Again, if the gauge is going up or if the value is going up, papaliit ng papaliit, ang ating uh, lumen ng, uh, or ang ating uh, diameter of our uh, uh, needle. That's why maliit ba ang needle na ginagamit? Yes. And usually, the syringe is tuberculin syringe which is calibrated uh, by a fraction of an ml to be exact, one-tenth of an ml. Okay? So, paano ba ginagawa ang intradermal injection? Usually, the purpose of your intradermal injection is for skin testing. Testing if the patient is allergic or not to a particular medication. Madalas, ito yung ginagamit natin. That's why, prior to provision of intradermal injection to your patient, he or she should not have 
uh, taken or should not take any antihistamine or anti-inflammatory preceding or after the test approximately 24 to 48 hours primarily because this might mask the anticipated or the actual result number two since we are doing or procedure number two step two since this is a parenteral injection dapat aseptic wash your hands and assemble all the necessary equipments then locate the antecupital space especially if you are using the middle or the ventral portion of your middle forearm the antecupital space will be your landmark then from the antecupital space depending on the age of your patient if the patient is pediatric one to two finger breadth from your antecupital space will be enough if your patient is a normal sized adult such as me usually you will require three to four finger breadth from your antecupital space upon locating that particular area hold the forearm of your patient using one hand firmly and stretch the skin skin yung skin tout niya gaganunin mo uunatin mo then from that that will uh, thin that particular area now that you have located that uh, the area of injection you are to start uh, tar start disinfecting or uh, cleaning that particular area using an alcohol swab we uh, utilizing the circular motion technique from the area innermost o kung saan ka tutuso, going out this will prevent contamination of the area of injection kaya kailangan uh, uh, secure it that see to it that you are doing it in the right manner because if you simply cleanse the area in whatever manner you you uh, de deem is necessary that might not well be as effective primarily because you are not being systemically cleaning the area and that might result to infection so anong gagawin natin circular motion innermost papalabas papalabas do not use povidine iodine uh, betadine for that matter primarily because substances of betadine might at times uh, mask the effect or uh, your observation on that particular area if the patient is allergic or not kaya alcohol na lang better next make sure that you are to position the syringe wherein the bevel yung opening slanted portion ng needle mo is facing upward because what would you like to create when you are doing intradermal injection a wheel and you will not be able to create a wheel if your bevel is pointing downward kasi i-absorb lang yon ng mga surfaces or ng mga areas beneath kaya dapat nakaturo sa taas yung opening mo as you can see in our image insert the needle through the epidermis where the point of the needle is visible through the skin almost see-through Paano natin pinapasok ang needle natin? Approximately at most 15 degree angle. Mind you, 15 degree angle is almost parallel to the skin. Kasi may umbok na yung needle mo. At yung umbok na yun is enough to create a 15 degree uh, elevation or angle of elevation. Kaya talagang parallel sa skin. Dapat superficial, almost translucent, but not to the point that you are going through and through the skin. Okay? Gradually inject the medication and observe for the appearance of a small blister or what you call a wheel. Uh, when the wheel appears, that means the medication that you have injected is already enough. Withdraw the needle. When the intradermal injection is given for diagnostic purposes, example, if you are to check for allergic reactions, control wheel should also be made. Paano po yung control wheel? Kunin mo lang yung solution na walang gamot, inject ka sa ibang part. In order for you to have comparison next using blue or black ball pen to mark the wheel in order to determine the actual size after injecting is usually required and you are to wait approximately 30 minutes prior to concluding if the medication or if the patient is allergic to that particular medication or not chart the name of the medication and adequately document all the things that you have done so that is basically intradermal injection punta naman tayo sa subcutaneous injection just beneath your dermal layer there will be a layer of fat tawag natin doon subcutaneous area so medications that are given through the subcutaneous or through subcutaneous injection uh, 
the medication is being injected into the loose connective tissues in between the dermis and the muscular layer of the body, which is basically the subcutaneous area, the fatty area. Absorption is usually slower primarily because a subcutaneous area has small amount of blood vessel compared to your skin as well as your muscle. Kaya mas a little bit slower, generally speaking, ang uh, action uh, ng subcutaneous area. However, mas matagalan. That's why this is the route of choice for insulin for patients that are suffering from diabetes. For subcutaneous injections, the maximum amount of drug that is to be inserted for your patient is 2 ml. Hindi pwedeng mas marami. Why? It might cause displacement of your adipose tissue. Yung mga taba-taba dahil naglagay ka ng fluid na displace. Ang tawag natin doon, lipodystrophy. Kaya hindi po e pwedeng more than 2 ml. Sir, what if the order is 3 ml? Pwede kang mag-administer sa isang site ng 2 ml, then to the other site ng additional 1 ml. Pareho namang subcutaneous area yon. Okay? But don't administer more than 2 ml in one area primarily because it will disrupt the normal arrangement of your fats or what you call lipodystrophy. Our site of choice for subcutaneous injection are the following. Hanap ka ng taba or fat pad uh, which is of a particular size which will include the abdomen, the upper hips, the upper portion of the back, yung mga may fat-fat doon, the lateral upper portion of the arms, as well as the lateral portion of your thighs. Those are your sites for uh, subcutaneous injection. Prior to performing subcutaneous injection, of course, you need to prepare the necessary equipments for this particular nursing action. Ano ba yung mga kailangan natin? Usually, number one, a needle that is gauge 25 to 27, which is approximately 1 fourth to 5 eighth of an inch. Depending on the length of the needle, yung technique natin. Because there are some needle length or some needle, some syringes for that matter, that you can inject directly or perpendicularly. Diretso lang. Pero kung mahaba-haba ang needle, usually it will require you to administer the medication approximately on an area of, of uh, insertion or, or an angle of insertion which is equivalent to 45 degrees. Okay? Uh, also, ang syringe na gagamitin natin is approximately uh, is uh, 3 ml syringe. Okay? Because the maximum amount of medication that you can insert again is 2 ml only. So, paano gagawin ang subcutaneous injection? Number one is you are to identify the patient and explain the patient regarding the explain to the patient uh, what procedure is about to happen. Position the patient on maximum comfort and privacy, exposing only areas that are to be utilized for this particular injection. Next, identify the anatomical landmark of choice. Yung mga pinakita natin kanina. Then, Cleanse the injection site with an antiseptic solution, same circular motion, inner to outer. Then place the swab between the fingers of the hand, not holding the syringe. Remove the protective needle cap, then grasp the skin firmly between the thumb and the forefinger in order to elevate the subcutaneous area. Ipipinch mo para magkaroon ng subcutaneous injection. Okay? Na, para magkaroon tayo ng area for subcutaneous injection. Holding the syringe firmly, depending on the type of syringe you have, you can use 45 degree angle technique, which is the safest, especially if you have a long needle. However, for straight needles na maikli lang, you can use 90 degrees. Once the needle is inserted, release the grasp gently, hindi biglaan, okay? Release the grasp gently to the patient's tissue. Now, Slowly introduce the medication. This will allow uh, the time for uh, distension and space to fill up those tissue para hindi magkaroon ng lipodystrophy and prevent forcing the medication back into the needle. Okay? When the syringe is empty, when the syringe is empty, smoothly and quickly withdraw the needle with the use or uh, and use the swab that is in your other hand in order to. Uh, put pressure on the puncture site unless contraindicated uh, as such as 
uh, with patients undergoing heparin treatment, the injection site, uh, massage the injection site to facilitate faster absorption. Okay, you need to understand that performing injections slowly does not decrease the pain. You need to perform it in, in a fast, however smooth manner. Suave, pero mabilis ang pagka-inject natin. Because this will lessen the pain as well as the unnecessary movements that might uh, induce again pain. Kaya dapat suave lang. And mind you, uh, after this particular injection, you are to position the patient comfortably according to the position he or she is comfortable with, then chart or document the medication administered. Next is intramuscular injection. When we talk about intramuscular, tapos ka na sa dermal layer, pumunta ka na sa subcutaneous layer, punta ka na sa susunod na layer, which is your muscle, sa loob ng muscle. That's why it's called intramuscular. Absorption is more rapid than before than compared to subcutaneous and uh, uh, dermal injections, primarily because there are a lot of blood supply in our muscle. Kaya ang alam natin, the greater the blood supply, the faster the absorption. That is a concept presented in your pharmacokinetics. Ano ba ang mga area natin na target? Number one is the ventrogluteal. Number two is the dorsogluteal. Sa likod ng puwet at sa gilid ng puwet or ventro sa gilid or sa medyo uh, uh, sa maharap ng bandang puwet. Dorsogluteal on our gluteal area, however, on the posterior portion. You also have your del uh, deltoid and your vastus lateralis, which is the site of choice for infants. Sir, bakit site of choice for infants ang vastus lateralis? If you have observed or if you have watched several fi uh, films, they usually associate uh, fetal movement with kicking motion. And that kicking motion develops the vastus lateralis. That's why, according to studies, the most developed muscle of your infants or, or of the fetus while they are still in, in the womb and right after the delivery, the newborn, the most developed muscle will be your vastus lateralis. That's why vastus lateralis is our uh, area of choice for administration of drug through the intramuscular route, especially for infant. However, the most accessible being our deltoid kasi wala ka nang kailangan tanggalin na uh, undergarments. Uh, just uh, pull up your sleeve, then by all means, you can access your deltoid. So prior to proceeding to your intramuscular uh, injection, you need to prepare the equipments for this particular intervention. Anong mga kailangan mo? Needle na medyo malaki-laki na, approximately gauge 20 to 23, with an approximate length of an inch to an inch and a half in order to reach the muscular layer of the body. Okay? Uh, let me... Uh, run you through the procedures to be done for intramuscular injection. Siyempre, step one is to observe the 10 hours for medication administration. Then, position the patient in order to facilitate maximum comfort, privacy, as well as drape the area. Expose the area na gagamitin lang natin. Identify the anatomical landmark by inspection as well as palpation based from the given landmarks or anatomical sites of choice. Identify the injection site. Cleanse the injection site with an antiseptic solution, again using a circular motion. Remove the protective cap from the syringe, holding the syringe firmly and perpendicular perpendicularly to the skin. Thrust the needle into the muscle at 90 degrees. So usually, nagpipinch tayo ng muscle in order to expose the muscles of your patient. Then, uh, just inject tuloy-tuloy, firmly but, but smoothly. Okay, then after injecting, after thrusting your needle, do not insert the needle up till the hub. Leave approximately uh, a quarter of an inch, primarily because there might be instances that the needle might break or might be separated from the hub. Naku, problema yan. Pag pinasok mo buo yung needle, tapos biglang nag-break, hindi mo na makukuha yung steel part. Hub na lang yung natira. That's why always leave approximately a quarter of an inch from your uh, uh, syringe or needle for that matter. Then, uh, holding the syringe with your other hand, aspirate by pulling back your plunger in order to determine the correct placement. Ngayon, pag may sugat, 
or pag may backflow, pag may blood aspirate kang nakuha, okay, just remove the needle and replay, uh, just remove the syringe from the patient, the entire syringe, then change the needle, then locate another area or replay, uh, 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 redo the particular procedure again. Pag wala namang blood ang nag-appear kapag ka ikaw ay nag-aspirate, okay, slowly introduce the medication. This will allow the time for distension in order to prevent backflow of that particular medication. Another may, another way to ensure that the medication does not leak out of the medication site is to draw uh, an air bubble of 0.3 ml into the syringe after the medication is injected. The bubble follows the medication into the needle tract and the subcutaneous tissue. After you have completely administered the medication to your patient, smoothly but quickly withdraw the needle from your patient and immediately put uh, that uh, swab that you have been preparing in order to put pressure on your puncture site. Unless contraindicated, you can massage the area to hasten uh, the absorption rate as well as uh, to provide comfort measures. Position the patient comfortably and chart. There is a special technique, however, in performing intramuscular injection. This is what you call z track Paano ginagawa yung z track Pinch, then twist. That will create a letter Z type of image. What is the purpose of using z track Primarily to secure the medication. Bakit? Pag nirelease mo kasi yan, imbis na straight line lang ang dinaanan, okay, pa-zigzag. That's why it traps the medication. If you have seen a famous Korean snack, uh, uh, I just don't know the fish cake that is uh, uh, punctured using a barbecue stick, ganun yung concept nun. Mas naho-hold yung, yung item. For, this, for our case, the medication is being hold due to utilizing zigzagging uh, track or the Z track na tinatawag natin. So that is for the purpose of preventing the escape of medication or leakage. Punta naman tayo sa tinatawag nating intravascular injection. Pag sinabi nating intravascular, sa loob ng vessels, usually our vein. Intravenous or IV administration of the medication is directly injecting medication through our venous system. Kasi meron din tayong tinatawag na intraarterial, both of which is considered to be intravascular. However, most common uh, most common na ginagamit natin ay intravascular uh, or or what you, or intravenous for that matter. This is to provide rapid onset of drug action. Primarily because drug is already circulating in your uh, blood system, in your circulatory system right after the injection. Kaya mabilis ang onset of action. When doing an intravenous injection, you need to uh, uh, prepare all the materials that you are uh, needing or that you are to utilize. Number one is the drug that is being ordered. Number two is syringe with needle. Number three is an IV fluid. Number four is a cotton swab and alcohol and the medication card. So, paano natin gagawin to? Okay? You should first choose the site of choice. Okay? Uh, the accessible peripheral veins. Usually, this is the cephalic or the cubital vein in the arm or kung hindi pwede ang arm or may restrictions or contraindications for you utilizing the arm, you can use the dorsal vein of your uh, foot. Pati, pwede lahat yan intravenous. So, anong mga equipment pa nagagamitin natin? For normal adults, usually, gauge 20 to 21 na needle. Okay? Usually, 1 to uh, 1 and a half inches. For infants, gauge 24, approximately 20, uh, 1 inch uh, length. However, if the fluid is highly viscous, example, blood, total parenteral nutrition, yung mga malapot that will clog small openings, you are to use large bore needles. Uh, approximately gauge 18, gauge 16, malaki na yung mga yon. That will uh, necessitate you to locate a big vein or a big vessel for that matter. Paano gagawin? In order to expose the vein, okay, or in order to expose that particular uh, vessel, tourniquet. Put a tourniquet. Just use uh, 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 your tourniquet, then put pressure in order to occlude blood flow. That will cause a bulging effect doon sa area. After that, cleanse the area using the aseptic technique, circular motion, discard. 
Then insert the butterfly or catheter into your vein until blood returns. Sir, pag may blood return, anong gagawin namin? Hindi ba tama yun? Unlike your intramuscular, na dapat walang blood backflow, ang intravenous injections natin, dapat may backflow. The moment that you have uh, uh, experienced backflow, that means you are inside a vein or an artery for that matter. Okay? Then stabilize the needle and dress the site. Now monitor the flow rate, the pulses, the skin color, temperature as well as the insertion site. Then consult the doctor or consult agency policy regarding the addition of medication through bag or bottle, piggyback technique or IV push. Isa-isahin natin sila. Okay? Simula tayo sa intra uh, intravenous bolus or intravenous push. This is the time wherein you are pushing directly to the vein of your patient the medication of choice. There are times na kung isa lang naman ang medication na ibibigay mo through push, diretso na yung syringe sa may vein natin. But at uh, most of the time, it's not uh, that uh, uh, particular scenario na nangyayari. Usually, your patient has already an existing intravenous fluid and on that particular tubing, may mga port. Just locate the port, cleanse it, mind you, aseptic technique pa rin. Insert the uh, needle portion of your uh, uh, syringe or if it's a needleless port, remove the needle and simply screw your syringe doon sa port. There are several ways on how you are to administer medication through your intravenous route. Una muna tayo sa tinatawag nating intravenous push. This is the time wherein we are simply injecting medication through the uh, through our veins directly. So usually you can facilitate this with the use of the needle directly. However, at times you will be required to utilize a butterfly or a catheter that will serve as a port of entry for medication administration. That is intravenous push. Meron din tayong tinatawag na incorporation. Wherein we are incorporating medication to your IV bottle or IV fluid, then you will let the IV fluid to drip or to be infused to your patient. Ergo, the term intravenous or intravascular injection through drug incorporation. Uh, ang nursing responsibility main mo dito is to check for the patency of your line. So you are to observe phlebitis as well as. Uh, Infiltration. Major difference, phlebitis is an infection or probably contamination of the area. That's why usual presentation of phlebitis is redness and heat. While infiltration is where the fluid has leaked outside your veins. That's why the common manifestation is edema and coolness. Observe mo lang kung alin doon ang nangyayari sa pasyente mo. Then, check for the placement of your IV tubing. How? Number one, by putting your bottle below the patient's level. This will facilitate backflow. And according to our previous explanation, backflow is indicative that the patient or that your line is still inside the, uh, the veins or the vasculature of your patient, the, the blood vessels of your patient. Meron namang times that you are still to, rem uh, to keep the actual IV fluid flowing, then insert the medication on the side inserted to a particular port together with the IV fluid kasabay na nag infuse yung medication. Ang tawag natin doon, side drip or piggyback. Okay, you need to understand that you need to regulate both in a manner that it will facilitate entry of both your IV fluid as well as your IV medication that is given through piggyback. Same with a piggyback, you are only to utilize a volumetric chamber when a certain amount of medication or solution should be incorporated to your patient. But still, the concept is the same as a piggyback. You are to keep the actual IV line and use uh, this volumetric chamber. Or if not, you can directly inject your volumetric chamber on your uh, uh, current IV and change the entire tubing in order for you to quantify and to limit every single time you are to provide a mix of medication or incorporation in a sense. So those are your samples of intravascular injection. So to wrap it all up, 
Pinag-usapan natin ang two major types of drug administration, namely your enteral, enteral dumadaan sa gastrointestinal, and parenteral. Uh, we have identified several advantages and disadvantages as well as contraindications for these kinds of route administration. Umpisa tayo sa enteral route. It's basically easy and convenient to use. It's uh, generally cheap by nature. It's relatively safe and you can simply control the medication administration. However, it is usually gastric irritant and might result to premature destruction of medication due to the pharmaceutic phase which will lead to inaccurate absorption or not 100% bioavailability. Also, it demands cooperation from your patient. The contraindication for this procedure are dysphagia or difficulty in controlling your swallowing action. The patient being a pediatric client, baka may special considerations. Uh, the patient is uncooperative. The patient is on an NPO status or for surgery and to have anesthesia. The patient is nauseated and is vomiting. Again, monitor the patient. And if the patient vomited 20 to 30 minutes after medication administration, as much as possible, save the vomitus and report to the physician immediately. Then, also, it is contraindicated for patients who have undergone oral surgery as well as diseases in the oral cavity. Parenteral, on the other hand, being injected has a rapid absorption. It is the choice or the route of choice for emergency medication. The desired dose is being measured primarily because the bioavailability bioavail is usually 100% due to the absence of pharmaceutic phase. And it is usually the, uh, the route of choice for patients with special consideration. However, there are several disadvantages. Number one, in performing parenteral injections, it should be performed as, uh, aseptically. It is not it does not promote patient autonomy, it impairs skin integrity, it causes pain, it is generally expensive, it will use special instruction, and it is draw, uh, difficult to troubleshoot when you perform uh, an, a medication error. And lastly, uh, contraindications for, uh, for this is uh, uh, presence of inflammation or scarring. We have also discussed several types of parenteral injection, namely, uh, intradermal medication in your dermal layer subcutaneous sa adipose layer ang uh, ang nursing responsibility is always to change the site to prevent lipodystrophy or displacement of fat you also have intramuscular wherein you are injecting medication directly to the muscle area and intravenous or intravascular kung saan nagbibigay ka ng medication directly to blood vessels most commonly the venous area Pinag-usapan din natin yung different types of intravenous uh, medication administration. Push, incorporation, wherein you are mixing the medication in the IV bottle. You also have piggyback, current IV, sa gilid lang, through another port, or even through the use of a volumetric chamber. So that's it for our module number 5, the major routes for medication administration. Once again, this is your lecturer. My name is Jonas. Greeting everyone and wishing everyone for the best and that you always keep safe. And this is me telling you that learning should always be a fun experience.